Okay, so this is going to be a different type of video. So today I've just got two little repair jobs and I thought I'll take you along for the journey because it's going to be a pretty chill day. So I've actually got time to record. So I thought I'll do a little video on what I'm doing today. Stay tuned. So first off, I'm just going to go to Howden's and get the materials. Okay, so I'm just at Howden's now, getting the materials, so yeah. Okay, so the first job I'm doing is just trimming down a few doors. So they've had carpet, new carpet fitted and I just need to come and trim down the doors to suit the new carpet because it's a little bit thicker. So yeah, just taking the doors off, trimming them while marking, trimming and then that'll be it. Am I alright to do a video for my website or while I'm doing it? Yeah, as yeah? long as like, my name and address it. Oh no, no, <laughs> no, it's alright. Yeah. Alright then, thank you. Okay, so I'm going to quickly run through the job. So, here's the job. Taking off this door, just trimming the bottom. Putting this door back on and just trimming the bottom of this one. It's also... This one that needs to be trimmed a little bit. Okay, so that's free. And then if we go upstairs. And then upstairs, this door can't shut properly. So this one needs trimming quite a lot, as you can see. Okay, this one needs trimming quite a lot to allow for the carpet and the threshold. And then apparently, it's also getting catched caught on the side of the door as well on the side of the door frame it's getting caught as well so as you can see the customer says it's catching the door frame okay so first off i'm going to start by marking and measuring all of the doors to cut on this one the door is already on and it's just a little bit i need to take off so I'm literally just running my pencil along to allow a gap for the carpet. On bathroom door two, the door is off. So I'm using my tape measure and just measuring. When making measurements like this, I always carry a little notepad around with me. This is because when I've made a measurement, a lot could happen. The customer could come up and talk to me. I could do something else before cutting. And in this instance, I'm taking more than one measurement. So I just write it down on my notepad, just in case I forget the measurement. After getting all the marks and measurements, it's time to take down all the doors. Once I've got them all down, I then get the first one of the trestles and transfer my marks I've taken from the door frame onto the door. It's a good practice to always check your door before cutting through. On this door, doors and metal doors stop in the way of the cutting area.
once I've cut all the doors, I then get them all upstairs and start fitting them on the frames. With this door, it was extremely important to put the door stop back on straight away because without it, the handle touches the shower screen, which could potentially crack the shower screen. Okay, so that's three doors done now. Now it's time for the top door. Now. I am actually dreading this one because taking it all the way downstairs is gonna be a big, big pain. This one, I'm still doing the exact same process, measuring, marking, taking downstairs to cut and then bringing it back up and fitting it. I know I might be making it look easy, but these doors are heavy. Okay, so another thing has been added and it's just fitting, well, fixing this door, okay? So, what's wrong with this door is when you shut it, it doesn't shut properly. It's the loft door and it just doesn't shut. You need to actually slam it really hard to get it shut in, so. I'm just gonna move it over on the hinges a bit. I'm gonna move it on the hinges because it's got a bit of room to move over. And if I need to plane it a bit, I'll plane it a bit, but maybe it will just um, work if I take in the hinges a bit more. And this latch as well is a little bit faulty. So I'm gonna chop in the latch a little bit and get it latching properly as well because at the moment it's very very stiff so i'm going to do that now So this door is fixed now, it took about 20 minutes, well not even 20 minutes, probably about 10 minutes and I charged 
30 pound to fix this door. And it shoots very smooth, very nice. Okay, so to this job, another thing was added. I just need to lower the skirting. So the previous flooring was at a different height. So there's quite a few gaps in the skirting now. My job is just to take off the skirting, lower it down, scribe it to suit the new floor, and then refit it. Level, so I'm going to need to scribe this skirting to the floor. Just just so there's not really any gaps at the bottom. So I'm gonna scribe it using my jigsaw. Well, mark it using my pencil and scribe it using my jigsaw. As you can see here, the floor dips a little bit there, comes up. <laughs> Here's me just scribing the skirting to see the new floor. And now here's me cutting the scribe to suit the new floor. By the way, if you like the look of the knee pads I'm using or any of the equipment I'm using, I've got my Amazon shop linked down below where you can buy any of the equipment. I will get a small fee for any purchase, but it goes towards the channel anyway. So if you want to help up the channel and buy yourself something nice, feel free. On this occasion, I'm gluing and nailing the skirt into the walls just because I think it's the easiest way and the neatest way. I think it goes without saying, but you should always check for cables before you start nailing skirting. Okay, so that's done now. So now to the next job after I've cleaned up obviously replacing a door seal also known as a threshold and I'm running a little bit late so yeah I'm just gonna get there and then show you what I'm doing once I'm there so yeah stay tuned Now, on this job, I am under a bit of time pressure. Because it's winter, it gets dark early, so I'm trying to beat the darkness, basically. So straight away, I get my tools and my PPE ready. If you like the look of any equipment in this video, like these knee pads or anything, let me know in the comments and I'll try and make a video dedicated to that equipment. Okay, so here we've got the seal. As you can see, it's very badly rotten. And here's the new seal I'll be using. So first off, I'm just going to cut it in half and then get this seal out. Oh, wow. 
as you can see when i take out the seal there is a lot of rot coming from underneath the seal this tells me that the main cause of the rot is not having a moisture barrier underneath now it could be from a lot of different things why the rot was caused but from looking at it it looks like it traveled from the floor upwards so there was no moisture barrier to stop it so that's what i would think it is but let me know in the comments what you think now on this job i didn't get much footage because i was just trying to be fast before the darkness creeped up on me but external door seals are fairly easy to replace all you do is take out the old seal as i just done and then just fit the new one here i'm just using my jigsaw to make some adjustments on the seal because underneath the door frame there are some nails that i can't reach with my multi-tool to chop out so i have to cut it to miss the nails so here the new seal is basically fitted i'll quickly run through what i've done so as you can see i've put a moisture barrier down so the timber isn't in contact with the concrete or the bricks I've secured the seal in place using a strong stick slide. I've also drilled, plugged and screwed it in place. I also plugged the screw holes just so we can't see any screws. After that, I then cleaned the seal down and sanded it down. And then once all that was done, I then sealed around just using some black sealant. Now you may be thinking why didn't I put the strip in the seal and that's because the door already has a draft excluding strip at the bottom of it so if I was to put a strip at the bottom it would have been hard to close the door. Okay so I've just finished all my jobs for today and to be honest it isn't that late it's around about 6 p.m but it gets dark early because it's winter times but yeah i've got one more job to do but to be honest it's dark and i'm just gonna call the customer and tell her i'll do it tomorrow instead she's i know she's all right with it because um we spoke and she says literally any time i can pop down and do it it's literally a 10 minute job i've just bought in something that i'm gonna charge standard call out of either 50 or 70 pound is my standard call out depending on the job this one will probably be 50 pound depending on the job and the location it's either 70 or 50 pound my call out charges but yeah um it's been a good day earned a decent amount and yeah i'm gonna go home got some other stuff to do like quotes invoices video editing but yeah i'm tired i think i'm just gonna leave the video here before i actually do leave the video i thought i might as well tell you how much i actually made for these jobs now before i tell you how much i actually made prices for tradespeople will vary depending on your location and also the time of this video prices also vary on how long it takes tradespeople to actually get to the job most tradespeople i've come across are fairly fair and they just charge what they think the job is worth but let's get straight into it so for trimming and adjusting the five doors i charged 130 for lowering the skirting i charged 30 so for the first job i made 160 and then for the second job of changing the external door seal, I charged 120 labour. And then materials were added on top of that. So I made £280 for these jobs. Sometimes I make a bit more, sometimes I make a bit less. But if you like these type of videos, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if we get to 100 likes, I'll start doing more what I charge type videos but thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed the video and don't forget to like and subscribe it helps out a bunch so thank you and goodbye